here we are going to discuss about one of the very important and one of the very catastrophic illness of the aortic disease is known as aortic dissection. So that is the reason majority of the authors often describe this aortic dissection is a catastrophic illness which is mainly characterized by the dissection of the blood between and along the laminar planes of the aortic media. This is the definition of aortic dissection. So generally we will see what exactly this definition means. We can see the different layers of the aorta over here. We know that aorta is the larger artery and it is the elastic artery, right? So it has intima, media as well as adventitia like all other arteries. But when we call it as an elastic artery, the importance of the aorta is the presence of the internal as well as external elastic lamina. So because of the presence of this both internal as well as external elastic lamina, the dilation of the artery that is aorta is mainly seen during the ejection period of the cardiac cycle which actually the one which creates the pulse which is present in the blood vessels. So for the pulsatile beat of these arteries we need the elastic fibers in the form of internal as well as external elastic lamina. So if you see the intima of the aorta over here, the intima is made up of endothelial cells, internal elastic lamina and also will be having subendothelial basement membrane or we can say subendothelial connective tissue. So endothelial cell, subendothelial connective tissue as well as internal elastic lamina together forms intima. After the intima, the next, the most important, thickest, strongest layer of the aorta is the media. The media is mainly made up of the smooth muscle cells as well as extracellular matrix. So the presence of the smooth muscle cells and extracellular matrix of the media actually maintains the integrity of the wall of the vessel. So which layer maintains the integrity of the vessel wall? It is nor adventitia nor intima, it is the media. So media contains the smooth muscle cells as well as it contains extra cellular matrix. So after the media, we have an external elastic lamina and after the external elastic lamina, the outer layer is called as tunica adventitia and above this tunica adventitia you can also identify the blood vessels which supply the walls of the aorta is called as vasa vasorum. This is the normal anatomy of the aorta. Why it is important to know because what happens in the aortic dissection is whenever there is a tear in the intimal layer or the intima, then whatever may be the blood which is flowing through the aorta enters inside the arterial wall. Once it tears intimal layer, once it tears the intima, the blood actually enters into the middle layer which is called as media. So you should say that in the aortic dissection after the intimal tear, the blood actually enters into the media layer we can say that leads to the formation of a blood filled channel within the aortic wall as we can see in this picture. So because of the presence of the blood filled vessel within the media, it often causes an aneurysm kind of a dilation even though it is called as false aneurysm and such false aneurysmal dilation actually ruptures outward causing massive hemorrhage in the posterior media sternum because of the anatomical location of the aorta over there. 
So, that is the reason this aortic dissection is considered to be the most uh, critical medical emergency. So, the most often pre-existing histologically detectable lesion in majority of the cases of aortic dissection will be cystic medial degeneration. So, this is what they will ask you in the exam. Cystic medial degeneration is the most common pathological phenomena responsible for the weakening of the aortic wall. So, because as I already mentioned in the beginning when I explained about the normal histology of the vessel wall that media is the one which is responsible for maintaining the integrity of the vessel wall. If there is a cystic medial degeneration of the media, there will be a weakening of the vessel wall due to there will be a compromise in the loss or compromise in the integrity of the vessel wall that is what we will see in aortic dissection. So, what we need to say here in aortic dissection there will be an intimal tear through which the blood enters into the media right. Usually the tear is present within 10 centimeters of the aortic valve annulus right. So, from the beginning of the aorta which means from the aortic valve within the 10 centimeters generally we will see the tear in the intima from where the blood escapes between the intima as well as media creating a false channel or the false lumen by forming an aortic dissection right. So, this is the basic introduction what you need to know about the aortic dissection. Let us talk about the anatomical classification of aortic dissection. We have right now two main anatomic classifications actually are often used to describe the aortic dissection. One is called as the Debakis classification and another one is called as the Stanford classification. But these days we often use the Stanford system but not the other ones. So, we can say that the Stanford system is most widely used these days. Now, let us talk about the classification of aortic dissection based on the location which means whether it is proximal or distal. So, you can see in the image over here the proximal aortic dissections are called as type A dissections which actually involves the ascending aorta right. So, proximal dissections are called as type A dissections often involve ascending aorta and proximal dissections are more common when compared to that of the distal dissections. So, the distal aortic dissections are called as type B dissections they often involve the descending aorta that is more commonly the thoracic aorta right. Not only that as we said that the proximal dissections are more common when compared to that of distal these proximal dissections are also more dangerous more catastrophic because the dissection of the ascending as well as the arch of aorta may extend and also involve the important branches of the aorta that is carotid arteries which often lead to the development of stroke by involving coronary arteries they may develop an acute myocardial infarction and because it will also involve the proximal part of the ascending aorta where you can see the attachment of uh, this pericardium will be seen at the root of the great vessels. So, when there is a dissection at the proximal part of the aorta the blood escapes into the pericardial cavity that is into the pericardial sac to develop cardiac tamponade. So, all these are considered to be an important complications depending upon the anatomical area or the arteries involved in critical aortic dissection right yeah. Now, we can also find elastic tissue fragmentation. So, why we are also seeing elastic tissue fragmentation because I already mentioned intima is made up of 
three important layers one is the endothelium next one is the subendothelial collagen and next one is the internal elastic lamina often there will be a fragmentation of internal elastic lamina rather than external elastic lamina so because of the elastic tissue fragmentation in the media that weakens the elastic artery but in most severe cases once the entire media is involved one can also find fragmentation of external elastic lamina but remember that more commonly it involves internal elastic lamina and there will be a cystic medial degeneration of the media whenever we think of aortic dissection always you should remember this word called as cystic medial degeneration of the media or in general we can say the cystic medial degeneration of the aortic wall because when compared to that of the intima as well as the adventitia media is the thickest there is a reason majority of the authors say that there will be a cystic medial degeneration of the media or sometimes they will also use the word called as cystic medial degeneration of the aortic wall so because of this it may predispose to the development of aortic dissection because whenever there is a cystic medial degeneration there will be a weakened part of the aorta so whenever the part of the aorta is weakened the high velocity blood which is flowing from the left ventricle into the aorta during the ejection period of the cardiac cycle may hit the weakened wall and it can cause an intimal tear and then blood enters into the cavity which is false cavity which is formed between the intima as well as media right so this cystic medial degeneration which is usually but not in all the conditions but this is the most uh, like important pathological mechanism we can say which is responsible for the initiation of the transverse or an oblique intimal tear in the ascending aorta right because it is characterized by degeneration of the collagen and elastic fibers in the tunica media of the aorta also and there will be a loss of medial cells medial cells means smooth muscle cells which are replaced by multiple cleft of mucoid material which further weakens the vessel wall right now sometimes when a false cavity is formed we often call it as a false aortic aneurysm so then what happens is the blood re-ruptures into the lumen distally right so means again a false cavity is formed there will be a distal rupture by the false cavity which is formed so there will be a second tear which is often formed distally so that a complete new vascular channel is formed inside the media of the aortic wall and the blood enters from the proximal tear into the media and comes out into the lumen from the distal tear by creating an independent false lumen within the wall of the aorta so this is called as double barrel aorta with a false channel which is created in the media of the ascending aorta and later this particular false channel which has been created become endothelialized and leads to a chronic aortic dissection and this is what we need to know about uh, the pathogenesis behind the aortic dissections now generally whenever like the blood is ejected from left ventricle into the aorta especially during the rapid ejection period of the cardiac cycle which means under systemic pressures this initial intramural aortic hemorrhage quickly gives rise to an unstable medial hematoma and this particular unstable medial hematoma what you are seeing in this picture which may extend within the media proximally towards the heart or distally towards the lower extremities also and sometimes what happens is in vast severe cases we can say there will be a rupture through the adventitia so whenever there will be a rupture through the adventitia so in general the entire wall of the aorta is broken off tear off so that is the most common cause of death due to aortic dissection especially because of adventitial tear 
because of the presence of this hematoma which is present within the vessel wall. Now, if there is a formation of hematoma and rupture of the adventitia, depending upon the location of this tear, if it is very close to the aortic valve where the pericardium is attached to the greater vessels, if the location is exactly over here, then the blood enters into the pericardial sac may responsible for the development of cardiac tamponade. But if the location is distal away, then the blood may enter into the pleural or peritoneal cavities and it leads to the formation of massive hemorrhage in those particular anatomical locations. So, the presence of the hematoma, whether it is in the pleura, whether it is in the peritoneum, whether it is in the pericardial sac, depends upon the anatomical location of the adventitial rupture, right? Based on that, we can see symptomatology over here. So, this is in general about the aortic dissection, pathogenesis or we can say the pathophysiology.